to the 1610s, and I'd like to introduce you to Harley. And Harley has created uh, a gown from about 1613 belonging to Jane Poe, Lady Margam. Many of you may know Margam Abbey, uh, near, uh, in between Bridgend um, uh, and Portalwood. Uh, and the Margams, the Mansells of Margam, were again some of the highest ranking nobility in Wales in the early part of the 17th century. Now, Lady Mansell here wears actually what is considered to be an informal gown. This is the equivalent of a tracksuit or a onesie in the Jacobean period. If she went to court, if she went to see King James I at court, then she would wear full court dress, which would be a huge round farthingale and a corset. This is actually something that you wear at home. So it is the informal type of garment that she's wearing here. And you can see, therefore, that she still wears a corset, and there's a bum roll underneath all of that, and two petticoats as well, one of which is colourful. Would you like to reveal a little bit of your petticoat, Mark? There you go. So gold silk petticoat as well, because layers are very important to show your wealth. And over the top of this, she wears a little jerkin, and you can see that the jerkin is slashed in the sleeves so that you see her underwear. Underwear was very important because, of course, in the 16th and 17th century, you couldn't wash your clothes very often. You would have to really beat them out uh, after a couple of months. But what you could do every day is to have clean linen to show that you were clean and yet you had high status. Of course, a ruff. And these were popular from the, uh, the 15th century onwards. We saw Catherine of Veron having a little ruff at the neck, but by the 1630s it had grown this size. Nowadays, with stage costume like this, of course, we construct it, but in Elizabethan and Jacobean times, that's all they would do was to take a long, long piece of lace, and they would figurate it, pinning every pleat into place, and then hold it together, they'd use starch. And the only natural starch you had in the 17th century was, of course, urine. So things weren't as glamorous as they actually look when they're finished. Thank you very much.